Well, welcome back to part two. Um, well, we're going to continue to build this, uh, this fermenter. And uh, I just want to welcome everybody. Hey, look, all you distillers, hobbyists, brewers, all of those forms of art and skill, uh, this is your channel, your outlet. Uh, I'm your humble host, and uh, please keep the comments coming. Uh, we are definitely responding and learning from them. Okay. Look, you get an opportunity, of course, subscribe, share us with your friends. We always say that. Uh, that does make a big difference uh, since that's the only kind of recognition we get. Okay. Um, I did get a comment already on part one about uh, heat, how to control heat, and I haven't thought through that process yet. But uh, let me update you since yesterday, and we said that no good plan survives first contact, and we did adjust and said so we're going to use plastic for our cover. I've already got that hole cut in there. Uh, and uh, I thought about it last night, had a couple of drinks, and by golly, you know, sometimes men want to, They'll create a solution, and then they're going to find a problem to attach it to. Well, it's kind of what I was doing, probably. I was going the long way around to get to the same end. Um, and as my dad always said, keep it simple, stupid. And so what I've got here is I've got this cargo strap. <laughs> I put the cargo strap on there in order to push down this piece of plastic so that it would mold to the to the curvature of my barrel, so I used my heat gun and I heated it, and it it, it did per it was perfect. And then I released it. I, when I did, I was like, "Why don't I just use a strap instead of going through all that trouble of putting on a piano hinge?" Um, my goodness, yeah, you know, some rubber seat. I can always use this later if I need it, but as it stands right now, I don't. So I'm primarily I'm done. I took this outside. I'll show you this hole. What I did was I just cut a square in the top of it, and see, now I'm able to reach in, uh, and I did, and I was able to get into all the cracks and crevices, clean this thing out, spray it with star sand, so she is clean and sanitized. So, my next step, which is uh, going to be relatively simple, I've already drilled out. Remember we talked about this yesterday, too, that these caps are just unique. They, they actually uh, have a threaded portion on the outside, a dent, indent that my valves screw right into. So I don't have to drill any more holes in the side of this and try to get in there and put a nut on the inside. They, they fit perfect. So this will become, this is a two-fold purpose here. This one will be a vent as I'm drawing off of the tank because you know you've got to, have, otherwise it'll stop. Uh, so there's my vent for that and also during fermentation while this thing is bubbling uh, I'll be able to open that and put a hose on there and put it into a bucket because you trust me a small bubbler is not going to be able to withstand everything that's going to happen inside here um, and my other one is a really it's, a, it's the difference is this is a high flow valve so I can really draw off it quickly uh, and that will go into the bottom and you'll see here that I've got the two ports there my hole is directly on top port on the top and then there's a port on the bottom this is my port that I'll draw from and this is the port that I'll vent through and um, interestingly enough we also built the the holder that goes come on now you get on there um, we, we built the holder that goes on the it'll take me a while to get that screw in there we built the uh, the holder in a manner that it's a quarter of an inch higher here than it is back here. So what I, what I envision and what I want to have happen as best as possible is for as the sediment drops, it actually drops back in this direction so that when I draw from here, I'm not drawing sediment out. You follow me? Um, it's, it was just an idea. Uh, I've got the option to raise it up a little bit more or even lower if, I, if necessary. But uh, right now it's set on a quarter inch slant. Um, I'm pretty proud of this thing. So, and what I've got here, since these caps are specific oh, yeah, to their female adapter here, I've got them mixed up. There we go. So, this one is a really coarse thread on the top. That was what my problem was. 
And this one is the fine thread that's going to go into the bottom. Yeah, there it goes. Yep, yep. So now I'm able to draw from here and I'm able to vent here or uh, use it as an airlock. Ingenious. My friends, we are done. That brings us to a close today. Now what I've got, here's what we got to figure out next. And we're going to do a video on this as well. When you've got something this large that you're putting that much effort into and you're going to try to babysit it because, you know, we, we did have someone write in about the Texas heat. And you're right here in Texas. It gets pretty hot. It doesn't get really that cold in the wintertime, but in some of these locations it does. So we've got to find a way to control the temperature in this. Um, and right now I've got the luxury of I, I keep the shed out here, the shop. Uh, around 76 uh, when I've got a fermenter in here uh, so I'm gonna, I'll do that uh, but we've got to figure out a way and later on we will we'll figure out a way to control the temperature in here for all of those uh, who have challenges with temperature now I'm not gonna put just a regular sugar wash in here I mean wh why waste all of that precious space and time you may want to do that uh, if, if you're just happy running a regular sugar shine uh, that's fine but um, what I intend to do is I've got probably, it's going to take, okay, we've got 50 gallons, um, and it's going to probably take me about 60 to 70 pounds of grain. Uh, I don't know, I haven't done the math yet, but I'm just, that's a, a swag, a sophisticated, wild-ass guess. So uh, with that swag, I have to pull out Old Blue and some of my other cooking utensils and uh, I'll have to start mashing uh, as we did in the other video. You'll see that here or here. Yeah, here it is. Uh, just click on that video and um, you'll be able to watch us how we actually went through the mash process with corn and rye. So I'll do that and then I'll try I'll fill this up and then I'm going to let it ferment in here. And uh, that way it'll always be available anytime I want to drain some off. Now, keep in mind, um, we've said this before. We've got a video on this. Mash does not turn to vinegar. My friends, it's impossible. Uh, it's ver it is chemically and physically impossible for that to happen. In order to turn, now you're correct, vinegar is made from alcohol. But in order to turn alcohol into vinegar, you have to introduce the acetobacter virus. And the easiest way to do that is to go get yourself some apple cider vinegar. It's got the mother in it. Looks like an upside, looks like a mushroom kind of hanging there, a cloud. Uh, if you can remove that and drop it in your fermenter after it's finished fermenting, and over about though about five yeah, about period about three months, it will turn that to vinegar. If you don't do that, it's a natural preservative. It'll last for virtually ever, virtually ever. I've had matches that I've had stored for. 9, 12, 16 months before I finally got to them, and they are just as good the day you use them as the day you bottled them or stored them. Just keep them sealed. That's all there is to it. So, until next time, as always, from here, we'll say, please return, keep watching, and happy distilling.